Hello guys, it is finally time. I've recently had the motivation to completely start from scratch in terms of having a brand new character and what better way to do that than with the new character itself which is the immortal champion of Forgelands. Now this is going to be a dedicated series to this one character which I have named Vazric and Essentially what I'm wanting to do is just go through the whole story, PVM, PvP, you know, one episode at a time and just see, just make it to level 200, obviously do as much as the game that we can do in terms of the storyline, etc. And just go from there. Now, you know, it is a very apparent that I have had numerous characters in the past, as you can see, I'm going to get very fast XP. Um, I will be times 4 up until around level 190, 180 or so. So it's going to be a base of, you know, I already do have a few items, etc. So it's um, it's not going to be completely from scratch. You will need to understand that. Um, at, the, at the beginning, you know, it is very much so going to be, you know, starting from nothing, working our way up. So I have got a few items in the bank. I do have access to my other characters to mage any gear that I want to but I just think this is a good time to start with the new character which I haven't really played much of I have made one already but uh, I've not really played it to a level of PVM standards I've only really done PvP with it so I, I do know it's basic mechanics which can be quite useful and I will talk about some of the mechanics as well as we go through so as you can see in the background we're just going to move on through the tutorial. can be a bit tedious, but, you know, it's got to be done. I do want to make this sort of like a 100%, so to speak. It is going to be very solo orientated, as I've always just been a generally solo player. And, uh, yeah, I hope you enjoy it. So, first off, we're starting with the tutorial up in Incarnum. This will take about probably two minutes or so when you start off in the main game. If you have never played Dofus before, basically what it is is a MMORPG that's been around for a crazy amount of time. Um, maybe, I, I don't know, over 10 years, I know that for sure. And it has progressed so much in line of content and graphics and community. But in recent years, it has sort of dropped off from where it used to be. But that's very, you know, that's very common with a few games these days. Um, the one thing I do love about it is the combat aspect. And I think the storyline is quite unique too. So the premise of it is to basically collect all primordial eggs. There are, there were six original eggs scattered among the world of 12. And your main goal in this game is to collect all the eggs do all the challenges it's kind of do whatever you want to do there's no real way about it to be to be fair but a lot of people play it for pvp a lot of people play it for pvm a lot of people play it for a lot of different reasons i myself like to take my time relax a bit and just go through it one by one i love 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 starting new characters i think it just really gives me a sense of motivation to kind of play through the game again in for me it doesn't get boring you know when a temporis server comes out for instance which hopefully is sometime soon this year um i get really motivated to play and it's the same with just creating a new character as we've got here so let's go through a few things first of all we've just finished the tutorial and we've managed to finish our first five quests which is the reason as to why I did the tutorial because in this game we have a tab called achievements achievements definitely the way to go this was introduced uh, several years ago it was never a thing at first but when they introduced it it basically just hones down sort of what your game is going to be and you get rewarded for these achievements such as karma's experience um, achievement points to get even more cameras and experience, etc. Really good thing to follow if you are stuck. So having this is going to be our bread and butter for this series. We're going to be utilising the achievements and going through them one by one. 
on the first page you'll see overall progress and it kind of shows you you know whereabouts you are in terms of say completing quests uh, it's given me a main quest which I can follow which is just there it shows me how many quests I've done in order to finish the achievement and to the right we've got the amount of points which that achievement is worth the top you can see if I hover over there is a total of 22,602 achievement points and we've only just got three um, it is quite a daunting number don't get me wrong and some of the achievements are ridiculously hard to get so let's have a look for instance you know some of these level 200 ones right at the bottom so some of the new challenges for instance crazy crazy hard um, but you do get rewarded for them accordingly so it is bittersweet and it does give you a sense of every time you come online there's always something to do whether you have the motivation or not it's just about finding it so when we pick up a quest which we've just done there as you can see on the minimap which I will extend and sorry if I'm talking too fast I'm just quite excited <laughs> since I've had this new internet I've been wanting to do something like this for a long time now um, so as you can see on the minimap this is Incarnum it's quite small in terms of the world of 12 but it is your basic starting uh, area now what I am aiming to do is in this episode complete all Incarnum quests won't take too long and from my own game knowledge and doing this several times probably 20 30 plus times I should be able to show you sort of a streamlined version of getting through this tutorial as quickly as possible so first thing we did was we talked to a lichen cis survivor and he's given us a quest called talk to Tanette. now you can see here there's a little marker which we can actually get rid of and you'll see it'll update on the minimap so when we click it it shows us where we need to go which is just one map right so everything is kind of spoon fed to you in a degree of it's making it as easy as possible for you you shouldn't have to be you know going on wikipedia and searching up a b and c the game does direct you in the way it needs to so i'm going to fly through this as quickly as possible and hopefully finish this within the next i don't know 15 20 minutes or so um, this episode will be quite a long one and apologies for that if you are here just for a chilled little video you are in the right place, but if you are a veteran in the Dofus community, I understand that this could be a bit tedious. Okay, so we're just picking up a lot of quests. Um, so we've gone to zero minus three. We're going to go up one. We're going to claim the achievement for the area. And I know there is a quest in here that we need to grab. Um, this is probably the most important quest to get from Kerub Captain as he basically gives you combat quests and if we go upstairs we basically start a fight with the corporal and we need to beat her she has two mp so this is the basic fight mechanics so you have mp and ap movement points and action points each one of your spells costs a amount of action points and when you move a cell we call them cells you are going to be utilizing your movement points so it is just about utilizing both of those things accordingly in order to pull off the most amount of damage not get hit and do and basically win the fight so here i know that corporal my nerve needs a line of sight so if i block her line of sight with my lances she won't be able to attack me because she can only attack in a straight line and she can only push back so very cheese way of doing it but it is just a tutorial okay let me talk to her again go back down and we get level six and we get our bread and butter of this build which is the no mere javelin really strong really really strong it is an agility style spell as you can see we have four of the elements now we have one of each it's an agility type spell which pushes back two cells really really strong especially early on so as you can see we got a quest from carob Kappen, which was to kill these enemies here which you will find as you leave the building in the fields vicinity 
If we press Z on your keyboard, which is the EN UK shortcut, it will show you all available mobs in the on the map. There is always going to be at least three mobs on the map. So as soon as you press C and you see that you you know you can pretty much do the whole challenge, best thing to do is just go straight into fight and do as much as possible. Next thing to, fo to fo focus on in terms of combat is the challenge mechanic. As you can see on the left, every time you enter a combat, you will get a challenge. Each challenge is different. Um, definitely worth doing, especially if you want the XP and loot. So this one says use exactly one MP. So I've used one MP, so I'm going to end my turn. Whew, that's a lot of words. <laughs> I feel like this is sort of going to be a tutorial, but also I don't want to undermine anybody who's obviously already played this game. I still think there are people out there who have never played this game before, and it is quite important because, you know, in terms of the uh, the community of the game, it has died off a bit in the, in the recent years, which is, again, understandable. However, it would be nice to get a few more people back on board and fall in love with the game because it is truly... A, a classic it really is a classic okay so we've got a few um, we got a challenge from that which you can see at the bottom left in the chat log everything here which is highlighted in bold is clickable so if you click it it will just open up where you are again making it easier for you to direct where you're going so here we can see that we've just completed an achievement which was to complete one challenge against a group of a level or high or equal to than your own so we just click we just collect that one and we get a nice juicy amount of xp now the quest we're following battlefields we still need to defeat a frightened evil dandelion and a small wild sunflower so if we right click on our screen as i can see there's a monster up here which is the one i need to kill uh, one i need to kill i can't see it so i can't click it if I hover around a lot, it will eventually show up. But if we go into general options and we view in transparent mode, we can see any enemies which may appear underneath a building or something like that. So I really want to fly through this in Karnam area because it is very, very easy. If you are new to the game and you are starting out, reading a lot of the text and just following you know going through it in your own speed is definitely worth doing this guy screaming is really annoying Ugh. okay so going through some of the forge lance mechanics you basically utilize the f your lance, and your lance is your main damage component here. When we throw our lance out, it creates a um, one cell AoE around it, which basically accounts for, it's really hard to explain. <laughs> okay, I'm actually gonna die here, so I'm gonna fail the challenge on purpose. I'm gonna make these guys come to me. Oh no, oh no, I think I'm dead. Yeah, okay. That's fine. <laughs> I didn't realize how strong they were. I was so focused on the challenge that I ended up just dying. But again, that's a risk you take. Okay, let's just, let's fly through this. Let's really fly through it. We have got a few characteristic points to put in. So let's put in 30 into agility just because that's going to be our main source of damage this early on. Because we are subscribed, we are able to reset characteristics at any given time, which is very nice. And I'll quickly go through characteristics after this fight. Hopefully we can defeat these guys. have some crazy range. Nice. Ok, 
Okay, we got some good drops from there. So every time you defeat a monster, you will get some drops. Not every time, I must say that. You do have a chance. And right clicking on a mob opens its best area. Best, best area. Best bestiary. Oh my god, I can't speak. And on here you can see the drops in which it can the loot in which it can drop. And if you hover over that, you have a base acquisition, which is the standardized percentage of you know the chance of you getting that drop after defeating it. And you have your acquisition, which is your actual acquisition, which is basically putting into account your prospecting and your idols and the challenge, blah, blah, blah. Um, so we have a 51% chance of dropping any of these items. 2% chance of dropping these ones. So we actually did manage to get one of them, which is really rare. Um, but yeah, let's just uh, go through this now. I don't want to talk too much about it. Pretty sure you guys will know what I'm on about here. Now we did unlock the haven bag, and <laughs> in unlocking the haven bag, if we press H on our keyboard, we have access to our haven bag here, and this is my haven bag, which is accessible from all of your characters on your account, and in your haven bag you actually have a chest. Now in this chest you can put in as many items as you want that it can hold. Oh, you can't destroy any of these. So behind this pillar, I have a hidden chest. And in this chest, I have quite a few items, as you can see. I don't think none of these items I can wear currently. As the lowest level item is... Oh, I have a pet, which I can equip. Really good pet, so we'll equip that one for now. But we do have a lot of stuff um, just to help us. So we've got some bread. We'll take 10 of those. We've got some transportation pots which we'll take can't use golden parchments which is bittersweet i don't really want to be using them anyway and we've got a few more teleports which we will also take okay as i said at the beginning i this is not a starting from scratch this is not a um sort of nothing to something this is just me playing the game starting again as a level one character everyone's journey is going to be different regardless whether you have just started or you have you know six level 200s on your account with millions and millions of gear everyone's is going to be completely different so it is about understanding that we're not going to do this challenge because it's going to take forever So we need to defeat two little glutes and two plip plops. Which are located in the lake area of Incarnum. So all of these monsters which Kerub is asking us to defeat are going to be located within a certain area of Incarnum. So like this one for instance. They're all located within the lake area which is only around nine maps or so. Is it the background sounds? Okay, that's nicer. Let's try this challenge. to defeat one more little glute. There we go. Um, and also while we're here, so we're just utilizing the area itself, we can fish for gudgeon. And one of our challenges here in the quest is to craft one sliced gudgeon. So in this area while we're here, this is why I always pick up the carob quest first because going around the whole map 
in Incarnum kind of links in with this quest here. Let's just get these ones as well. Might as well. How much cushion have we got? 15. Let's get this nettle as well before someone takes it. And the ash wood. I'm trying to think what the shortcut is. Is it Y? Yes, okay. So Z is for on your hot on your keyboard. Z is for monsters and NPCs. If you press Y, it will highlight anything that's interactable. So as you can see here, nettles, ashwood, um, even this little podium. So it's quite handy to know these shortcuts, especially when you're just moving from map to map. And we also need to talk to Fatima, who is located within here. So we just need to introduce ourselves. We'll buy. This is something to point out, actually. This is a hidden quest. So if you click on the in at zero minus three, there is a little notice on here. And if you accept the job offer, you've got a quest called Death to the Rat. So you need to go inside. Go down the stairs. Again, pressing Y, you can see which what is interactable. So we interact with this. Make the rat leave its hideout. So in order to do that, we need to come back up here, ask for a drink, and I believe we get Mimi milk or me milk. No, we don't. I think we get lemonade. <laughs> That's my bad. Yeah, lemonade. And then we just attack the rat. Now we should be strong enough to kill this rat. Has a decent amount of HP. There we go. Then we talk to Fatima again. Announce that you've eliminated it. And really easy quest. Very quick. Good XP. Definitely needs doing. Okay, so we need to speak to Carib again. So if we go in here, there we go. Next one we've got is spirits in the pastures. Pastures are just to the right, but because we're going to the right, we're going to go to the left because we need to get some wheat to craft some bread. So we'll get a few wheat. <laughs> I should have really timed this. Oh wait, I can see how long I've been recording. 23 minutes, and that's from the tutorial. Let's see how long we can do, let's see how quickly we can do this. So we're going to the oven, we're going to bake some incarnum bread. We're going to make one, because we just need the one. We might need the wheat for later, so. And then we're going to go to the pastures. And we need to defeat it's a shame these maps are really big. If you want to make your fights a bit quicker, you can put in creature mode. Which helps very marginally, but it basically just gets rid of the spell animation. Like so. So we need to do white gobbly and little gobble. So we've got a little gobble here. Our challenge is killed in descending order. So we need to kill the uh, gobble gobblator first. And also while we're here, again looking at the quest, we need to speak to the Azella and we need to examine. Perfect, so that's that line of quest done. There is also another quest here, which we'll pick up quickly. Um, offer to help, take free powder, and there is also a white gobbly as well. So we'll defeat this one here. Let's 
Okay, so that's um, that's the rest of that quest done. So now we need to, just need to speak to Carob. We're going to quickly get the Amanita powder, which is located inside here by defeating Amanitas. Oh, they go first. That's annoying. Okay, we've got one. Also, within this mine, we can get iron, which is going to be needed for the quest later. So we'll get a few iron quickly. on these what's the odds it's a 46 percent chance if we do the challenge we have a higher chance so let's do the challenge if we can there's one we just need one more and then we never have to come back here again so scanty this is the most rewarding of the challenges it's basically each player must not use the same action so whether that be a spell or a melee or whatever for the whole fight it just is just once but it is very rewarding as you can see sweet so we've just done that so we will hand in the powder quickly while we're here and there we go that's that quest done now because we've got access to our haven bag if we are in incarnum and we use our haven bag we can use the zap now the zap is really useful in this area because it is very cheap and it just helps you zoom around in Carnum relatively quick. Okay, so we've got the second quest from Turnet, which is to examine the relics. Um, the relics are not really shown on your map, as you can see. So we'll, I'll kind of show you where what they look like. It's these little things here, these little podiums. And... We just need to make sure we click them whenever we see them. There's one in each area, so definitely worth picking up when we're doing Carob's quests. Okay, so we've done uh, that one. Next one is Persnit, Tigurus, and Ac Acro Cat, which we know is down here. Also, moving down, we'll talk to Holly Brook. Introduce yourself. So what I'm basically doing is utilizing the pathing. So wherever I'm going, if I see a quest, one map, or very close to me, I just will pick up that quest and get it done, rather than obviously wait around. Just flying through these ones right now. We've got another quest here. Let's just pick this one up while we're here. Oh, this is the recipe. Ugh, I hate this one. So, as you can see, there's another relic here. And when we click it, it will get rid of it on the sidebar. So now we just need to defeat a Tig, Tigrimus. But because we're one map away from the Fishmongers, we'll just quickly create the Slice Gudgeon just for the Natural Products quest. So if we go in here, prepare a fish, we'll create one of those. And we need to go up to... Oh no, we still need to finish this one. So we need to defeat one more Tigramus. <laughs> I 
There we go. So that's Carib's next quest done. Now again, using the Zappy, we're going to go to Way of the Souls. Speak to Tanette. And basically we're doing her main quest line. So, Village in the Clouds, that's the main quest. But while we're doing that, we're just getting all the side quests done out of the way. And as you can see, the next quest for Carib is to defeat Cruella Troishush. We're going to handle in some products. We just need to craft the mini healing potion now. So, the mini healing potion is located here in the Alchemist Workshop. Ooh, one thing I need to suggest is, this is what I should have done a lot when I first started. As soon as you start a new character, um, we need to buy, I forgot where you buy it, a hunting knife. Hmm. No, I, I actually forgot where to buy it. quite annoying. I thought it was bought in the Hunter's Workshop, but clearly not. Ah, okay, so you have to craft it yourself. Okay, so crafting one ourselves. If we press... Oh god, if we press J on our keyboard it opens up professions. And if we go to Smith, we can see here hunting knife. So we need to go to the Smith's workshop after crafting the mini healing potion. <laughs> and there's another relic. So we just need pastures and fields now. So let's prepare this potion. Just need one. We're gonna again. It's only two maps away, but it's you know it's two karmas. It's stupid quick. We might as well do it while we're here. And now we're just looking for the relic in this area. And I think it's one of these two. Yep, there we go. Okay, and then we're going to go to Way of the Souls. We're going to hand in our potion. And he's also going to give us another one, which is Particle Board and Ferrite. Particle Board is made with Ashwood and Iron. Ferrite is made with Ashwood and Iron. So that's why it's worth picking up stuff while we're on the move. I'm going to just probably, no, I'm not going to buy anything because it's so expensive. We're going to talk to Fekaline the Wise. We need to read the book, which is this one here. We need to talk to her one more time. And then we've got these three tasks to do, which are highlighted in purple on the map. Okay, so we're in the Smith's workshop. While we're here, let's just try get a, another vein of iron. It's heavily farmed, so it's going to be quite difficult for us to get it. Okay, there's one. How much do we need? I think 22 should be enough. Smith's workshop and let's also craft um, the hunting knife that's it so if we just quit the hunting knife now every time we defeat a monster in Incarnum we're going to get some hunting XP and that is really useful especially this early on because you're not going to really come back to this place after finishing all the quests what's this one? craft a particle board we can do that we do need to get the ash wood, so 
How much ash wood do we need? So we need one particle board. We need three more ash wood in order to complete this quest. But again, while we're here, we'll drop down one and speak to this guy. And he's basically asking us to defeat this evil, fl evil flame, which we can do pretty easily. Okay. Also, while we're down here, we will complete this quest, which is to defeat this Oza. We've got Blitzkrieg. I don't think it is possible. It was very close. There's nothing else around this bottom end. Uh, we'll just quickly get this zap just to help us in the future when we need to come down but back to this area. And then we'll press H. Go to the way of the souls. Oh. And speak to an old hand. So this one you need to speak in a certain way. Otherwise, he just cuts off the conversation. Oh, God, I always forget which one to put. Okay, so it's the bottom two and then the middle one. So talk to Carib again. I know this seems very tedious. But this is literally just this part of the game. In terms of <clears throat> in terms of the rest of the game, so once we leave the tutorial island, it is very spaced out. You know, you're not just sort of going to each map and every single person is an NPC that you need to speak to. We need one more Ashwood. Let's see how to make the pancake recipe as well. So wheat, magical cure, tofu eggs, mimi milk, ashes and slobber. I think we have all of that. We just need one more ash. One more ash tree. It's quite annoying. I don't want to sit here and wait. So resources take around five minutes to regen. So that's why it can be a bit tedious. If worse comes to worse, we'll just purchase the rest of the wood. I'm just hoping there's one ash wood that hasn't been chopped down. Okay. Oh, there it is. Nice. How much do we need? We need three. At least three ash wood. Nice. Sweet. Let's go craft this ferrite. to Way of the Souls. We're going to go up one so we can craft the Incarnum Pancake. So 
So you should get the recipe for this, just for doing the quests in which I've done. Because I haven't really fought anything. Um, I think the rewards of the quests that you receive actually help you craft it. Okay, and now the final one is this one, which is the longest, which is to craft a full set. Now the full set he's asking you to craft is cheap in a way that everything that you've received through your quests, you should have the resources. Okay, say goodbye and leave. And then we need to talk to Fekaline again. Let's see if we can make the ring and the amulet quickly. Aha, we can. So that's two of... What, six? One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, two of six. And that took about five seconds, not even that. Okay, here we go. So we've got the final quest, which is the Snow Wolf Snout. That's the final quest for Incarnum in terms of the main storyline. But we've still got, as you can see on the left-hand side, you've still we've still got quite a few quests to do. But they will all come together, which is the nice thing. Do 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 do. We need to talk to a Barbarella. So we need to show the jam. I should have said she just asked for five nettles. So yeah, picking up the nettles earlier definitely helped. And there we go. So that's that one done. The final one is the relic in the pastures. Which we will get quickly. I think it's located somewhere up here okay nice so we just need to talk to Tanet again which we know is in the way of the souls so we'll go there and then she gives us I believe one last quest which is to go to the top to the north and the south of Incarnum to speak to two gentlemen who have telescopes and you just need to go to the telescope and just look through it doesn't matter where you look and then we go back so I'm saving the match for chafers and the snow wolf snout now I'm saving that for a reason because we need to do the the dungeon of the tutorial but the dungeon of the tutorial has these monsters in it so when I get to this point I keep this quest and I keep this quest together just to make it a bit easier okay so now we talk to Tanet go back to the way of the souls there we go so that's that high on discovery quest finished we need to finish making the set now which we'll do so as you can see, it's all tying together. We're making the set, and we need the set to get better characteristics. The better characteristics we have, the stronger we, you know, the stronger we hit, and we need we need the set for the dungeon as well. So it all comes hand in hand together. Okay, so flood. We're missing nettles, so we need to get some nettles. There should be some just outside here. Okay, they're exhausted, of course. There's some. And we'll get these ones as well, just to be safe. So we've done the cape, we've done the ring, we've done the hat, we just need the belt and the boots. Okay, that's the hat done. And now just the... Oh, wait a second. I think belt and boots is made here. 
Yeah. That's my bad. So it's just this one. So boots. And then belt. Sweet, so that's a full set finished. If we go up one, he just asks to see the set. He's not going to take it away from you. And there you go. The last one is to craft a half loaf and a lumberjack hatchet. So this is to show you your smithing skills and your carver skills. And then also the key. The key is the most essential part because it, the quest is basically telling you you've made a set, you need to go def defeat the monster, so to defeat a monster you need a key. Now the good thing is when you start as a new character, you get a... Oh god, new celestial wool. <clears throat> when you start as a new character, you get a bunch of keys. The bunch of keys basically give you a one-time access into every single dungeon in the game, and it resets every single week. So, if we didn't have a bunch of keys, yes, we would need to make the key. Okay, celestial wool. Have we got enough now? Yeah, okay. So there's the hatchet. Let's see what we need for this one. We need more celestial wool. We need three more. Okay, let's equip our set just to give us some better stats. And we get Blitzkrieg, that's brilliant. Blitzkrieg is really good. We need to basically one hit turn each monster. So once it's hit, it needs to die. Which we can do relatively easy. And we got exactly free will from, free will from that. Now to craft the key, we need Incarnum Relic. Now Incarnum Relic is dropped by Chafers. So the quest is assuming that you've done this quest before you've crafted the key. Which makes sense. Um, so carve, half loaf. So you know what, I guess we will just go to the cemetery and defeat a group of three chafers. Okay, it looks like we're all in twos. Nice. So that's the that's the Incarnum Relics done. So now we just need to go to the Handyman Workshop and craft the key. And then I think we've done the majority of the quests. Now it has been 50 minutes, um, but obviously I have done a lot of talking as well, which again I do apologise <laughs> for. Yeah. Hopefully some of the information's been a bit useful at least. There we go. So he's finished his quests and then the final quests are these two here. 
and we get level 25. So we are definitely more than capable of defeating the, um, the dungeon, which we will go do now. But just before we do it, I want to see if we're able to craft any idols. I don't think we will. Yeah, I don't even think idols are craftable anymore, I'm not sure. Okay, let's go. Cemetery. So this is basically a little insight into what the dungeons are like. They are comprised of five rooms, typically. And we need to make sure we use the correct dialogue. So, because he's got a question mark above his head, he gives us a quest as well. If we were to just hand over the key and enter, we would sort of lose his quest. So we need to find out more about the Snow Wolf and ask how you can enter. And then we get a quest update. Right? And then we go back and then we hand over the key and we get another quest. Which is basically to, to defeat the dungeon. <laughs> Now, this dungeon's very, very, very straightforward. We will try to do as many challenges as possible because the, the group is going to be higher level than us. I think. It should be anyways. So the challenges here are zombie and faint hide. So we are flying through this, which is good. Just got to make sure we don't die. Just quickly a loaf of bread. I think this guy wants us to join him. Okay, I think we're in the boss room now, which we do want to solo, so we're just going to sadly kick this guy. Um, <clears throat> so at the end of every single dungeon boss, you'll be given a set of specific achievements. Now it was it is in it, it it is oh my god it is within your best interest to try and do these achievements. If you could do both, it would go. Happy days. If you can't, that's completely fine too. They'll come up on the side here as an orange challenge. So this dungeon achievement is basically to use one MP and to kill the boss first. The challenges I would personally try and ignore 
always go for the achievements, they're worth a lot more. So we're going to try the achievements. We might die the first time, which is completely fine. But as long as we do it, I'm not really too bothered. Uh, the reason why it's important to try and do this is to, first of all, save time so you don't have to come back and do the second challenge. And, you know, the XP and rewards, you know, why would you not want them? Okay, he's going to hit us quite hard. When he hits CC, he hits ridiculously hard. So if we move here, we might be able to get him. There we go, that's the first challenge done. But we're not in the clear yet. These guys do hit hard. So we need to be quite careful of this now. Especially because we're only able to use one MP. Um, we can potentially kill this one. Nice. And then we can move one cell and kill this one. Now it's this one that's the difficult one because he is ranged. And he's always going to keep running away from me. So what we're going to do is shield up. And we're going to throw out our javelin. Just for a line of sight measure so he can't hit us. And then we're going to withdraw it. And we're going to move it. Actually no, we need to keep it there. Line of sight. And he should come to us eventually. Okay, you can't hit us. So let's withdraw the lance, so he should come closer now. Nice, and we've got shield. Okay, perfect. And that should be it. With the achievement, make sure, especially on zombie, that you move before you finish the duel. Otherwise, obviously you'll lose. And the next thing we need to do is find out more about him. Because we haven't finished the quest yet, we're not in the clear. And we need to ask him questions about the Snoo Wolf, and then we gain access to the Snoo Wolf lair. Now because we've done Recipe for Disaster, uh, not Recipe for Disaster, wow. Because we've done Pancake Recipe, we get a pot of jam, which basically makes it so we don't have to do the fight. And then we can leave. Now the final bit of this quest is to find the map Cyclop Tomb, which if you follow the position I'm going now, 4-1 on the map, Cyclops Tomb is here. Again, pressing Y, you can see an accessible um, button, same with here. And we just have to defeat Cyclop. Which uh, shouldn't be too difficult if you've just defeated the dungeon. We get a sack of jewels. And then we need to go back to Kerub. Who is up here. Give him the sack. And we've done his quests. And then we go to Fekaline the Wise. Oh, we might just do this in under an hour. We're at 59 minutes. Quick, quick, quick. Last thing we need to do is find Mast Ascension who is over here. We've got 30 seconds. Speak to him, decide that you would like to go and explore the world of 12, approach the portal, talk to the emissary, and there we go. So that is all of the incarnate quests done in literally exactly one hour. And we're gonna get a lot of XP from this, so. We go straight to level 36, which is big, very big. Um, this is what we ended with, you know, pretty, I am pretty fortunate I do have a pet which helps us quite a lot. Um, pets aren't too expensive these days, obviously if you hit me up in game, more than happy to uh, 
help support people who are freshly starting out. Um, it is good sort of seeing new players get into the game, so I'm more than happy to help. But yeah, let's just quickly go over our achievement guide here. So we went from three achievement points to 155. If we go on to general tab, not general tab, sorry, quest tab, main quests, 2%. We've done all of the adventure time quests, which is the Encarnum quest line. And we get a cool looking shield, just to show everyone that we've defeated it all. So a nice little introduction. Uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed it. I am planning on making the next video relatively soon and the next video we will be going through you know the main few dungeons um, especially early level and yeah if you've got any suggestions or you want anything in regards to Dofus any help information guides etc just let me know I'm more than happy to help so yeah this is uh Carl Strom signing out I'll see you guys there